Elizabeth wasn't always the one that we picture as this sort of resolute, stalwart figure. At that time, she was insecure and decisive and really threatened by Mary. She learned a lot from Mary and became the Elizabeth that we now know. So being able to challenge these stereotypes and allow these two queens to tell their story as opposed to stories being imposed upon them, um, you know, I, I think is not only sort of help set the historical record straight, but through our 2018 lens, we're able to investigate them in ways that we might not have before. Sertia and Margot are so dedicated to their craft. I mean, the amount of rehearsal, the amount of research, the amount of, of really getting in the skin of these characters um, that they did just in preparation, let alone when the cameras start rolling, was, was really um, awe-inspiring. The whole story is about their relationship, and yet they spend most of the movie apart from one another. Um, you know, Josu really helped create a, a sort of narrative framework in the filming that allowed them to feel as though they are in dialogue with each other, even though for much of the film that's happening just through letters and emissaries. I played uh, David Rizzio, uh, who is the right hand of Mary Queen of Scots, and uh, he becomes in history the liaison for French affairs and really her most uh, close confidant. I think in many ways uh, you can draw so many parallels to what's happening today, for example, I mean, the, the through line of the story is um, how women have been coerced in many ways, their power has been blocked, their power has been taken away, even these big figures of power, you have had a lot of you know, toxic masculine figures around them trying to usurp or, or guide their paths for their benefit. So when you see this movie, it's really a testament to what's happening today and that the fight for that equality and for that power has taken so many hundreds of years and it's enough of that. It's a film shot in Scotland and I'm from Scotland and any time anything's made there I want to be involved and even more so when it's about Mary Queen of Scots because she's a, a figure that's talked about a lot in Scotland and romanticised and so to get to know her in a different way would be great and just yeah I mean the cast Serge and Margot and the part that I got to play is a total gift of a part he's 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 a great character to play I play Lord Darnley who Mary marries and he becomes King Consort of Scotland and quite quickly becomes it becomes evident that he's not going to be the man that he wants to be anymore and is going to have to play second fiddle to a woman which was um, it's some, to some people back then a horrific idea and that's really something that's at the core of the film and um, so it was great to sort of ex explore that and explore um, his vulnerability as well and his insecurities yeah um, yeah, I mean, well, I'm Scottish and she's Irish, so there was a, a, an instant sort of understanding of, of humour and sarcasm that helped it with, with, with what we had to do. And um, I think, um, I, I mean, I was completely led by Sarah. She, she was just a phenomenal leader on set. And no, she's amazing. There were a number of reasons. I thought for a period film, which can often read quite uh, stuffy and formal, the way that Bo Willimon, who wrote the script, um, uh, the, the screenplay felt, felt very refreshing and alive and also um, relevant and modern and um, the fact that Saoirse and Margot are attached and I was a huge fan of Josie and her work in theatre before at the Donmar. Um, so there was, there was a, a multitude of reasons I wanted to be involved. Tell me a little bit about So I play um, Robert Dudley and he is the, uh, he's part of Queen Elizabeth's council and he's the, the kind of closest male figure to her. Uh, he's her lover and um, he's the one that gets closest to her. From, from, compared to the other men, he's a, he's a bit of an outsider in the sense that he doesn't act, um, his agenda isn't political or in terms of his own benefit or self-gain or power. Uh, it isn't for politics, but he acts out of love and loyalty for her and is willing to kind of sacrifice himself for her in that sense, at least in this version of the story. It came because I realised that Mary's enemies had stolen her story. So I went back to the archives, to the actual original 60th century sources, to find out, you know, the truth. And it was just different to the version of history that had come down to us, because her enemies put out what today we'd call alternative facts. And so I tried to set the record straight and give Mary her own story back so that she could own it again. 
My other half and I, Julia Fox, who's another historian, we took we took Margot Robbie to Hampton Court with Josie Rourke for a whole afternoon, and we had a, we had a great time. Uh, I've, I, I saw quite a number of cast members individually, uh, and just you know gave them coaching sessions. An amazing script by Bo Willimon, the author of House of Cards. A great story that needed to be told, a fresh story about these queens that talks about how hard it was for them to struggle with the men around them and all the ambition and the conspiracy and that felt very new and exciting. And I think that Saoirse was on board first and Margot really wanted to work with her. Also, there's this one big cool scene in the movie where they meet face to face. It's a big, long, seven minute epic scene and I think they both really wanted to act that scene. Well, I think that we are continually asking ourselves questions about how we can improve women's workplaces, even if those workplaces are kingdoms of Europe. I mean, there was some serious girl power on this on this film set, and I wanted to be a part of that big time. I was uh, at first very trepidatious about taking on the role of Elizabeth, who's been portrayed by some of the greatest actresses of all time. Um, it's quite a terrifying legacy to attempt to join, so um, I, I, I was definitely hesitant about the role, but about the project in general I was incredibly excited. I wanted to work with Josie, I wanted to work with Sersh, um, and the script was really brilliant. And uh, I don't find a lot of similarities between old Lizzie and I. Um, of course there's been so many different portrayals and, and people obviously focus on different character traits in, in each portrayal of Elizabeth that you see. In this version, in this depiction, I really had a good time exploring her more vulnerable side. Uh, I think uh, the, the Elizabeth that I portray in this film is very cautious, is very isolated, um, and, and sadly, I think she has quite a tragic arc in the film. By the end, she really does several times with all ties with her womanhood and, and kind of becomes the throne and the image of a monarch. Yeah, she. I mean, Saoirse is amazing. She's a brilliant actress. She's a brilliant person. I, I was just, I was just so happy. She was a big part of why I wanted to do this. I wanted to work with her so badly. You know, I think uh, historical pieces are always fascinating to me because I do feel like they are always commenting on things that we're talking about and analysing in society at the current moment. This film certainly does that. Um, so I guess, I guess it's a wonderful way. You can escape to another world, but you can also kind of analyze a, a lot of conversations that are going on in current society. It's something that I have been attached to for about six years. Um, it's the longest amount of time I've ever been with one film for. And it is amazing like how different the relationship is with the project. You're just so sort of immersed in it and emotionally so connected to it because you've spent so much time thinking about it. So by the time I actually got to do it, it just felt like I don't know, it felt like something I had waited a long time to do. It was really special. What was Mary like? Um, I mean, she's described as being someone who's quite passionate, quite um, strong-willed, um, really sort of wants to follow her own path. She came from a long line of stewards who were very, very fiery. Um, and her mother was really sort of tenacious and, and really headstrong. Um, and... Yeah, she was just a real fighter, you know, and she was also, she was a girl, she was a human, she fell in love and she wanted to be a mother and, and kind of wanted it all.